Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're going to talk about keeping the world company today. Namely, we're going to analyze the ICJ decision on Israel and Hamas a few days ago. We're going to ask what does it say and what are its implications. We're going to discuss this with our co-host Tim Apatella and our special esteemed geopolitical analyst, Rupmati Kandakar. Welcome to the show, you guys. Hello, Ajay and Tim. A pleasure to be here with you guys. So there's so many issues here. I, I don't know if we can really touch all of them, but let's uh, let's begin to, you know, question what is the ICJ, the Inter International Court of Justice? How does it compare with the ICC? Uh, we're going to talk about how this case got in front of them, uh, what they did with it, um, what the procedure was, what their mm, provisional decision has been, and where it goes from here. And we'll talk about the, what do you want to call it, the political, geopolitical factors and influences that affected the court. Exciting. Uh, let's see. Ramadi, could you start, could you just give us a precy uh, about what happened here? Hold it yeah, down Jay. to two hours, will you? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Jay, uh, now we are talking of the International Court of Justice, which is being called on by South Africa to declare Israel uh, creating or um, what is that no. it's like the you know destroyer of human rights and, and genocide. genocide yeah so that's what so um, this ICJ uh, ruling that we have got it's a 16 to 1 uh, ruling J and uh, it was actually a 15 to 2 ruling in uh, against Israel but it changed to 16 to 1 when one of the Israeli lawyers himself went to uh, towards the uh, that Israel should be declared as indulging in genocide and not allowing humanitarian aid uh, and ignoring all Israeli defense that this is a case in which Israel was not uh, the oppressor. In fact, it was the victim. And that has been brushed to a side. And we have this ruling which says that Israel has to be... It's a two-week proceeding which took place. And uh, this came up to the point that Israel has to stop uh, and annihilating the population and uh, hurting the Palestinian people. I mean, it's a, it's a uh, totally uh, against Israel ruling J. In simple layman terms, if we talk about it. So, well, uh, you know, they said uh, that um, genocide was plausible here, and they were going to have, um, you know, further proceedings, and they wanted uh, to uh, give Israel a month to come back and um, prove up on, you know, its position that there was uh, no intent uh, to have genocide. And they ordered Israel, to the extent they have any authority, they ordered Israel to preserve all the evidence of genocide. And um, they really didn't say much, if anything, about the hostages or about the atrocities on October yes. 7th, which I thought was interesting because they could have, but uh, all they said is they thought the hostages should be released um, but uh, Hamas was not a party to this, uh, is not a party to the Genocide Convention. So the whole thing is skewed, and, and it raises the question, does it not, about the real authority of this court, the real authority of the United Nations, um, and the real existence of uh, international law that will govern the international community. Um, let's, let's go to you, Tim. Um, what's your you know, primary reaction here? Well, primary reaction is, why don't we just outlaw all war? And I say that because, you know, I was looking at, if you want to call it in the indictment here, um, that the report they put out, uh, they said, quote, uh, they should stop or cease, continue to kill Palestinians bodily or mentally harm or delib deliberately inflicting on their group. Um, isn't this the definition of war? Uh, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, in World War II, you had the bombing of Dresden. In one night, 25,000 people died from suffocation. Uh, when you had the uh, Tokyo bombings between March uh, 9th and March 10th of 1945, you had about 70 to 100,000 individuals die, civilians die. Um, this, was, this was called warfare. And I, I hate warfare, I really do. And so rather than trying to parcel out a, a piece of what warfare is, uh, let's let's condemn warfare as itself. 
uh, in its entirety. Stop war. Because as a, as a definition of war, you have collateral damage, and that collateral damage ultimately falls to uh, civilians that are not, they're non-military. Uh, but you're, there you have it. Uh, Israel has declared war on Hamas uh, by the fact that Hamas hides shoulder to shoulder with civilians uh, in the tunnels, under the hospitals, in the hospitals. Um, how do you conduct war when you have that kind of um, proximity to a civilian population? So I, I, I react strongly to this, this report and these allegations because um, it really is a, a, con, a, a condemnation on war itself. You know, I, I keep on wondering, you know, what exactly is the ICJ? Um, there are 153 members of the Genocide Convention, uh, which was established actually at uh, the re request of uh, the Jewish people after, you know, the genocide and the Holocaust. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I find it interesting that um, the, the ICJ has not not found uh, what Putin is doing as genocide. Yeah. It hasn't even opened a docket on that. Uh, the, the ICC, which is the criminal court, has issued a warrant for his arrest. But that's, that's all you can do because Russia is not a party to any of this. Um, so, um, you know, you know it's, it's a court without really any leverage. If the ICC, like that the ICJ has 153 members, that's a substantial part of the 192 members of the United Nations uh, who did who refused to condemn uh, what happened on October 7th. So you already know that this is part of what people complain about the UN, that the UN is on a decline, that the UN doesn't recognize the morality of, of these global events. And, and, and that for the UN to say, oh, okay, well, the, the, the uh, Israelis are um, plausibly genocidal here is so cynical. And Netanyahu has said as much. I would say as much. IDF has said as much. Um, you know, remember that uh, apartheid was born and raised uh, in South Africa. Remember also that BDS, which is an anti-Semitic organization, was created by uh, Arab groups in South Africa. So South Africa is carrying a torch on this. Why South Africa of all the countries in the world? Why not any of the Arab countries? And P.S., why don't they take the Palestinians? They don't do that. None of them do that. Not a single one. So you wonder if this, um, this business in front of the uh, ICJ is no more nor less than an attempt to legitimize a court, which is not really recognized as legitimate. Oh, it's fancy. They have black robes and white, and white uh, ties and all that. Um, but you know, query, are they the right people to do this? Now, of course, uh, Hamas likes the result because uh, the court said that, that there was plausible genocide, whatever that means. Um, and, and a lot of, um, um, what do you want to call it, progressive liberal organizations uh, in and around the Middle East and in this country and said, oh, good, uh, we finally uh, are bringing Israel to accountability over what it has done in, in Gaza. Mind you, the court did not stop the war. The court did not order or suggest that there be a ceasefire uh, in, in Gaza. It only said that Israel should take all steps appropriate to uh, reduce the number of casualties there. And, uh, you know, some commentators have raised the question on uh, whether that really requires Israel to do anything, because it is already uh, trying really hard to avoid civilian casualties. So, and it's probable that the, um, it, you know, its con conduct and battlefield is going to be unchanged. So yes. what about what about your thoughts, um, uh, Rupmani? Uh, you know, Hamas is, is, is the elephant in the room, but Hamas yes. is not a party. Hamas is genocidal by way of their charter and their um, the, the statements of their leadership who say they want to kill all the Jews, destroy the state of Israel, destroy Jew, Jews. Uh, and it's yes. in their charter, and they say it all the time. They say they, they will re repeat the attack of October 7th over and over and over again. Isn't there some logical problem, some cynical logical problem um, with prosecuting, uh, accepting these claims against the Jewish people who were the victims of the Holocaust, 
which is the one you know, fantastic genocide that we know about in, in the 20th century, uh, when Hamas can make these statements and do all things possible to execute a genocide against the Jews. But now we have this cynical twist where the Jews are charged with genocide. Yes. Your thoughts? Yes, Jay. It is uh, highly, highly, uh, you know, regrettable that this decision was passed. But we have seen that there was a documented terror attack by the Hamas that has been ignored. And when we discussed in our last program, Jay, that South Africa had to take this issue up with Israel. They had to dispute, argue, and disagree. And after that, the case had to go to the ICJ. But they uh, they uh, they overlapped it and took the case directly to the ICJ, which is actually not in the way the ICJ has to process. And the ICJ accepted it. And transcending Israeli and uh, South African statements, the ICJ ruling has mainly relied, relied on the reports of the UN officials who have talked about deprivation, uh, starvation, uh, lack of health care, you know, um, uh, harming the civilian population, their account of what Israel is doing to uh, Gaza, not what Israel is doing to Hamas. So it's a one-sided, you know, it's not a very balanced uh, uh, understanding of the case that the ICJ has taken. And we have seen that the Secretary General himself refused to put Hamas into the documents that were coming out, in the resolutions that were coming out. And he was uh, talking in the way that um, Israel is often the oppressor and J ICJ is an organ of the UN and it will support what its leader says, isn't it? It's not going to go against what uh, the Secretary General says. So everything has to be in a sequence. Everybody has to, everything has to have a, you know, um, a implication that, you know, it's a um, full-throated comprehensive uh, decision. So that's why this ICJ uh, decision is not right, J. Wait a minute, these guys are supposed to be independent, these judges. Ah, yeah. Are you yeah, saying yeah, that right. there's a real possibility they're not independent? Uh, they're at the wrong end of the influence of the General Assembly? Undoubtedly, undoubtedly, because see, if they had ruled that Hamas is a terror organization who attacked Israel, the Secretary General would have looked like a liar, isn't it? He has openly not agreed to put Hamas, the word Hamas. It is very important to put Hamas because Israel is fighting a terror attack uh, retaliation it is not going against uh, you know it's not going against the state of palestine and icj is a court which has to rule and jurisdicate between two states or a criminal and a state but not between a state which has been under terror attack they conveniently have uh, overlapped it and overlooked it and that is um, you know a point that is highly lacking in this case today. so the judgment is absolutely, absolutely der derogatory, I can say, because the Holocaust is forgotten. They say, keep your uh, memories aside. And, you know, you facing a new challenge. And instead of giving a balanced ceasefire, they have gone towards condemning Israel. And unofficial reports right now say that there's a ceasefire brokered between with, with the help of Qatar. So civilians in Gaza are celebrating. Now, where does it make the ICJ stand? So, you know, it's a it's an issue which gets solved between two states or two terror, uh, you know, uh, at the base level. So the ICJ ruling falls apart, completely falls apart. They have not mentioned how the UN aid was mismanaged. They have not mentioned how the warehouses were looted. They have not mentioned how the civilians were standing as human shields. They have not mentioned Israel gave 20 days for uh, the civilians to vacate, which country would have uh, done this? Now, they so, haven't the, mentioned where that uh, uh, at least a dozen employees, employees uh, yes. within within uh, UNRWA were in fact involved in the atrocities. Yes. Uh, yes. That's extraordinary. They didn't say a word about that. It's like, you know, somebody is missing. The, the elephant in the room here is Hamas, and it is it's not really being held accountable or even discussed. Um, do you mind, uh, Tim, I want to read something from Nathan Sales. He's a non-resident senior fellow with the uh, Scowcraft Middle East Security um, Institute and um, initiative, rather. Um, and it, I think it, it, it helps to foment our discussion. <clears throat> Quote, um, the uh, ICJ's ruling is more noteworthy for what it did not say than for what it did. 
Um, the court did not hold that Israel is violating international law, nor did it order Israel to end the war against Hamas, which is what South Africa sought and which the court previously ordered with respect to Russia's war of aggression on Ukraine. Instead, the ICJ simply instructed Israel to comply with the Genocide Convention, which, as a signatory to that convention, since it was established in 1950, it, uh, Israel is already obliged to do. While Pretoria's allegations against Israel, Israel may have been, as the Biden administration put it, meritless, counterproductive, and completely without any basis in fact whatsoever, the ICJ's split the baby approach was perhaps perhaps the best outcome Jerusalem reasonably could have expected. Indeed, the ICJ's criticism of Israel must be understood against the backdrop, ready for this, of the chronic hostility shown by other organs of the United Nations uh, to the Jewish state. On the very day the court's ruling was released came the stunning news that the UN's Organization for Palestinian Refugees, that is the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA, fired 12 employees because of the poss their possible involvement in Hamas's barbaric October 7th terrorist attack. UN women, women took weeks, UN Women is an organization, took weeks to condemn Hamas's widespread use of rape and sexual violence against Israeli women and girls on October 7th, only to delete its statement when parties hostile to Israel objected. Perens, the organization did eventually issue a statement that was not retracted. And of course, the UN Human Rights Council for years has singled out Israel for disproportionate criticism. Since the crea its creation in 2006, that Human Rights Council has adopted more than 100 resolutions about Israel. Notorious human rights abusers, such as China, Cuba, and Zimbabwe, have been the subject of zero resolution by Nathan Sale. So, Tim, your thoughts? Well, there's a, should be an additional paragraph that the question should be raised, and maybe I'm getting cynical in my old age, but um, you look at organizations like the ICJ or any organization, and the question has to come up, how are they funded? because uh, the hand that feeds the organization has the influence of the organization. So my question is, how is I ICJ funded? Um, who is that hand that feeds them? Because there's influence, most likely. They're not independent, uh, unless they have independent sources of funding. Um, so that, that's something I would always look at in the background. And as far as the points raised in, in this, what you just read, um, they're spot on. You know, one thing uh, I want to go a step further on this, group, Mahdi, is that is that the court was trying to, you know, kind of hoist its own jurisdiction because it oh. knows that the U.N. is on a decline and it knows that the court really doesn't have all that much independent authority. Um, so, you know, this this is a, a way to legitimize the, the court, perhaps, um, just as the ICC needs to be legitimized, perhaps as an independent criminal court. Um, and, and in a perfect world, the United Nations would, would, would be at a higher level. It would not be declining. Yeah, it would not have 100 resolutions against the one democracy in the Middle East. Um, and it would stand against Russia and take active steps against Russia. Um, and some say that uh, this this decision, although it's imperfect and the court is imperfect, actually raises an interesting possibility that in the future, if the UN plays it right, and I am not saying the UN has played it right, but if the UN plays it right, um, these two courts can actually have a positive effect of achieving accountability, especially from countries that are engaged in genocide, such as China with the Uyghurs, um, such as Russia with the Ukrainians, and, and uh, as uh, Nathan Sales mentioned, uh, Cuba and Zimbabwe. Um, so query, in a perfect world, uh, what could, should the United Nations and these courts do to regain their legitimacy, their credibility? Right, Jay, in an uh, ideal world or perfect world, 
um, UN stands as the sole intergovernmental organization that the world, the earth has today. So kind of, it, it is the only uh, place where all the nations can come and discuss, but it doesn't happen because we have the veto power, we have the veto problem, we have the reform problem. These problems of the UN infrastructure still exist even after uh, decades of its existence. And Jay, this decision, like we have seen, and we want it to be a utopian uh, place where, you know, the, deci the decisions are not binding. And the UN does not have a force to have it binding on the decisions cannot be implemented. It will be like a guideline. And you know, Jay, states will always have self-interest in hand more than, you know, these, these, these points will be taken as guidelines or, you know, uh, chiding remarks, but they will not be taken as something binding because there's no enforcement. And thank God there's no enforcement. Because when the UN used uh, the responsibility to protect and had a collective action of many nations to get into Libya with force, we saw what happened. There was a regime change, Gaddafi out, uh, oil prices increased. There was a different kind of an issue. And now they're reluctant to get into uh, Russia and Ukraine because NATO is over there. So the ki kind of UN, the, uh, the non-accepting adjustability that it shows in geopolitics is not right. It has to take a uniform stand, like Tim said. It has to be uniform. It doesn't have to be case by case. You know, if you have a set of rules and they imply to all, people will know what to do about it. But if you have something which will go as per the flow and change and uh, basically be non-binding, it will have no relevance in today's world because we are dealing with nuclear bombs. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, let me just uh, review who is a member of what. Israel is a member of the uh, Genocide Convention, I believe. Um, yeah. The uh, U.S. Uh, waited until 1988, almost 40 years before it joined. I, I find that interesting. Uh, Israel is not a member of the ICC, uh, the criminal court, um, but, I, but I think it has uh, agreed to cooperate with both of these courts, and it is cooperating in this proceeding now in The Hague with the ICJ. The U.S. is not a member of the Treaty of Rome, which created the ICC. So what you get is, <clears throat> regrettably, some countries, including the U.S., are a little spotty on whether they go along with these conventions and the jurisdiction of these courts. And let me add that another critical problem um, that the uh, I'm reading from another um, commentator, and the ICJ only has jurisdiction over states, they say, mm. not, not over acts committed by Hamas, which is not a state, and other Palestinian groups, which are not states. It thus could not have, the ICJ thus could not have issued orders to preserve evidence related to crimes that may have been committed by these groups in this case, nor does the ICJ have the power to issue an order relating to evidence of war crimes or crimes against humanity. To ensure a future accountability, Israel should seek to preserve evidence relating to all atrocity crimes in the conflict. So what I get out of that particular commentator is there's something wrong here with the jurisdiction. Why is it only states when we live in a world of terrorism, right? These terror organizations are powerful. They're funded by, by states is what it is. Um, and if this court is going to have any meaning in the context of genocide, uh, war crimes, crimes against humanity, atrocities, which we see happening here, uh, then it must have a jurisdiction beyond just states. It must have jurisdiction other on, on, on individuals and um, groups. Um, and so, I, you know, I think it's, it's hobbled and it needs to be fixed. Your thoughts? Jay, they don't have a definition of terrorism. Absolutely no definition of terrorism yet after so many terror attacks all over the world. So I don't, Tim, Tim can uh, elaborate well, on this. You know, you, you, as, a, as an organization, you can de-legitimize de yourself by, by ignoring the obvious. And you just pointed that out. Uh, the obvious is, it's, you know, there's atrocities committed by non-states. So how legitimate of an organization are you when you ignore the obvious? Or how legitimate are you when you, you know, charge things over and over again and uh, to no resolve? 
uh, to no solution or resolution. Um, your credibility as an organization starts to dwindle, and I'm not sure that's a, the best path for them to take. No, if you're looking for accountability in order to, you know, uh, diminish the phenomenon of war crimes and genocidal crimes, um, you've really got to do better. So here we are. Uh, we've had this, what do you want to call it, uh, preliminary order, uh, such as it is. Um, Israel said, well, you know, we succeeded because they didn't order us to stop uh, the ceasefire. And the um, uh, uh, South Africa said, oh, no, we won because we, we have them uh, say that uh, there was uh, the plausibility of, uh, of a genocidal intent. And so what we're, we're doing now is one, uh, we're on a one-month hiatus. It doesn't appear that Israel is going to change its uh, uh, conduct on the battlefield, and I agree it should not, because the hostages are still there, um, because yes. Hamas is still firing rockets into Israel, um, because they're fighting and killing Israeli soldiers. So exactly why should they stop? Um, anyway, you know, aside from the possibility of another peace fi fire agreement, there's some serious talk about that, it appears. Um, the fact is that the war is going to go on in that month, probably. And uh, in that in that month, um, Israel will have to you know, preserve evidence, which I think it would do anyway. Um, and at the end of that time, the court is going to come back and sit again. Um, this was only provisional. This is only preliminary. So when it sits again, what's going to happen? Um, Group Mahdi? It's still going to rely on the documents of the UN official state because it's not going to waver and prove its first provisional decision as wrong. And Jay, Israel and US, the allies which are fighting this terrorism war, are one of the biggest contributors of the UN, which funds this ICJ. And when uh, you have this kind of a decision, you have celebratory uh, uh, com uh, voices coming out that they have tamed the bullies. So that is kind of, you know, uh, inclination of the court's justice that we see already, that it is inclining towards the other side, other side of the bullies. So that is kind of wrong. They forget that the bullies were under a terror attack. And ICJ, when it sits back again, Jay, believe me, they will not deliberate on what the evidence of Israelis. They will rather say 26,000 people killed over how many days, but they will not mention 7,000 people killed in one day or 3,000 entered, 7,000 terrorists entered on one day. They're not going to mention that. They're not going to take the evidence, like you said, of illegitimate sources. So that's a big thing. There's a flaw in the proceedings itself. You know, I don't, I don't know exactly what the procedure is in the, in the court as to third parties. But, um, you know, you have Yemen going on at the same time uh, and the Houthis, which is um, arguably an organization. You have Hezbollah coming out of Lebanon. Um, you know, you have the PLO um, creating unrest in the West Bank. And, um, and of course, you have Iran, which is the great puppet master for all of this. Those parties are not parties to this case. You know, if there was a real court here, a real investigation going on by an impartial, you know, international body, wouldn't it include reference to an investigation of all those parties? Tim? Absolutely. And again, if you want to consider yourself a legitimate organization, you would actually spend the time and money to investigate exactly that, what you've just mentioned. Um, I, I go to, you know, again, funding, follow the money trail. And if you have the ICJ come up with a one-sided um, preliminary report, I agree with Rumadi is that organizations rarely admit they've made a mistake or they, they weren't thorough in their investigation. So there's a loss of faith, uh, face um, that they're now you know, looking at. So what do you do? You dig in harder. You dig deeper and you, you say, we didn't make a mistake, and you commit to it. Um, the old saying is, stop digging when you're in a hole. And I think the ICJ probably is in that hole, but they won't admit it. So what you do is you give the, the future uh, despots of the world, I'm thinking of Donald Trump, an excuse to get out of the United Nations. You could use examples like this as a rationale to say, we shouldn't be funding the United Nations and we ought to pull out because they are one-sided, they're not objective, 
and they did a lousy job in any kind of investigation. And you give the ammunition to people like Donald Trump, if should he ever become president again, God, God help us. But um, you give them, uh, give that individual ammunition, ammunition on this. You know, Robert, well, money. I want to explore one other thing. You know, in the period between October seventh and you know, now, um, there have been um, there have been remarks made in the press, proof given in the press about uh, a how the hostages have been treated. You know that from some of the hostages, the ones we got back, um, and B, um, the human shield phenomenon, where um, you know it's, it's not just today; it's that Hamas has been using all of Gaza and all of the Palestinians as as part of its military operation as a human shield, um, and of course taking millions and millions of dollars of of world money, of international money, uh, and 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 misapplying that through the creation of um, you know military terror tunnels, and so this has not been covered. Um, people have said, many people have said that it's a war crime to to put tunnels under children's beds. It's a war crime um, to put um, weapons in children's schools. Uh, and pre preschools, if you will, and to and to uh, mislead people by putting them in mosques and and so forth and hospitals. Um, these are, by definition, war crimes. How come this is not being discussed? The war crimes started on October seventh. The yes. genocidal statements have been going on since the since the Arab community first attacked Israel at the time of the Israeli independence, saying they wanted to kill every Jew. That's genocide. How come none of those things are before this austere court? Jay, the most genocidal statement I can tell you is from the river to the sea. That one is the most genocidal statement. That is ignored. And you had a population which was willing to shield these uh, Hamas leaders. When they had made a Reiki that this is the area that they want to uh, close in, and they request the civilians to move out through a route, the re civilians refused. That was not, and um, Israel was enraged because of the terror attack right into their homes. And Jay, this um, retaliation of the terror attack was because of the possibility of it happening again. We have discussed it time and again that this was an opportunity for them to come back if they had been left. So uh, now calling it as genocidal statements and, you know, the army, the, the uh, heads of state are going to say that we are going to protect our people. We are going to get do away with the terrorists. We are going to eliminate the terrorists. They will not say that we will care for the terrorists. You know, you we saw the indoctrination and the uh, social media uh, uh, cloak that the Hamas used of waving to the hostages and, you know, uh, high-fiving the hostages. Israel did not indulge in that. Israel was straight talker because Israel was the victim. And Israel did not have the time or patience to do this. Hamas had to save face. Hamas had to delay tactics. So they were doing all these things. Israel spoke straight, but they gave a chance to all the civilians to go out. There was enough of humanitarian aid happening in a place which was out of Gaza. You cannot keep on supplying into Gaza. And these things have to be taken into account, Jay, that Israel has given every call, every note. They were dropping pamphlets. We remember we discussed that. They were dropping pamphlets, vacate the place. The civilians were not vacating. The children, I'm sorry to say that they were used as human shields. There was zero uh, tolerance for the Israeli hostages. So where does that go, Jay? Nothing is discussed about this. No, it's interesting. It's, uh, how can you... If you're in a court like this, which is an open-ended mission, it's not like they're limited to dealing with what um, you know South Africa would like them to consider. Uh, they can open it up wide. They can examine all the facts and all the circumstances and decide exactly where do the Israelis fit here. Um, it's clear that they do not wish genocide on anybody except Hamas. And and uh, anyway, it's just it's really interesting that you get this kind of skew. So, but passing on that, going further than that, Tim, um, Joe Biden has uh, supported um, 
in, in different degrees at different times, the uh, Israeli position. And I read you a quote of what he said to the uh, ICJ. He supports Israel in the ICJ. Is that right? Is that what he should be doing? Is, is it right in terms of the morality, in terms of the proceedings, and in terms of his political troubles at home? Well, Joe Biden took it on the chin on Afghanistan. And it, this discussion comes up often about um, our support for Ukraine. And that is, if you're an ally to be counted on, you better be an ally to be counted on. And um, was is he correct to support Israel? Yes. Uh, particularly when... Um, you know, there's two sides of looking of what's happened. And, and, and secondly, it's a war. And there's a lot of horrible things that go on in war. And uh, so Joe Biden took the right position. He's an ally. We're an ally of Israel. And um, you and I have talked about this before, is that whoever gets the first step or the first leap on the public relations, uh, the media relations, that, that message sticks to the minds of, of the populations of the world. It sticks. Whether it's true or not is irrelevant. It sticks. And believe me, Hamas got out there very early prepared for this. Um, the old saying that a lie can travel halfway around the world before the truth can put on its shoes is absolutely accurate in this case with uh, Hamas attack on, on Israel and uh, Israel, Israel's response. All right, let's go to final um, statements here, if you don't mind. Rubmati, you're first. What message would you like to leave with our viewers on this subject? Uh, that the UN is still not as relevant and or not as honest as it seems to be. It is absolutely um, uh, one-sided one judgments which are convenient to the UN is what is uh, degrading the relevance of the UNJ. And this is once again proved in the ICJ judgment on Israel. And uh, we see that United Nations is the only infrastructure available to humankind to negotiate on a table. So I think it should be valued and not kept on such a, you know, um, superficial level. I can call it superficial, Jay. Okay. Um, and Tim, your final thoughts um, about final where thoughts. this is going? Um, ICJ got way out above the edge, over the edge of the cliff. Uh, they need to um, retract, look at their preliminary report, redraft it, consider a balanced uh, set of evidence and report on that in their, their, next, their next report. Uh, if they fail to do so, then they, they, uh, they, they damage their credibility as an organization that the world really would like to see as a valid organization. That's my final thought. And uh, one thought I have is that in this next um, session, if you will, of the ICJ, after one month goes by, um, with all the evidence that um, you know, the parties, especially Israel, is supposed to produce, um, they could, Israel could uh, put into issue all of those other things, like what happened on October 7th, what happened with the human shields, what happened on the tunnels, um, what happened with the hostages, I could go on. And Israel does have the possibility, uh, and uh, hopefully the court will listen and expand the inquiry to cover the, the circumstances that surrounded this whole affair. And that would be, that would be productive. Well, thank you very much, Arup Mani Kandakar. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And Tim, our co-host, thank you very much for this discussion. Very valuable. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.